Hey guys, Steve Allaire. Today we got a game in the freezing for you, Jersey Swirsky, that's the build. This is a game where if we're betting at the track or whatever, at no point in time would you bet on blue team. Uh, basically, I don't know, For the certainly for the last half of the match until the final buzzer. All right, that's one of the biggest comebacks that I can remember. Uh, no point in time did I really think we we're going to win this game outside of maybe the first two or three minutes. But me and... Uh, Battleship player on my team, the Bismarck, kind of hang in there and uh, snatch this one from uh, the red team. So pretty exciting game here. Four destroyers per side. Uh, we got an extra battleship. So we got one cruiser. They got two cruisers. Atlanta, Indianapolis. Both of them have radars. Atlanta and Indianapolis are the top targets. All right. We want to always be checking the radar going into the match. What are we looking for? Which class has the least amount of... Of ships, okay, cruiser. That's already a higher value because it's a rarer, uh, you know, each class has its own role. Okay, that role is rare. It's more valuable to get it off the board. Add in the fact that we got a lot of destroyers who are probably going to decide the outcome of this game and the fact that both those cruisers have radars, extremely high priority targets. So those, if my battleships are uh, checking the rosters and they're aware of how to play the game, those should be the first two ships killed. Uh, we'll see how long they take to actually go down. But nevertheless, here we are, Greece. We're on the A side. Uh, we got some help. The guy that spawned on B coming over here. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, I talk about destroyers on this B cap and this map being kind of a waste, and that's fine. I would send a cruiser or a battleship into there, but we're going to go ahead and concede B. Okay, fair enough. Uh, we got one destroyer going to C. The other one, AFK, couldn't be bothered. Buffing his Dewey. Uh, thanks for loading in. All right, so that's the situation here. And it's going to be a tough fight. Like I said, this is going to be uh, down to the wire. So here's the opening play. And really, this match doesn't start too poorly. I mean, it starts to go south about three, four, five minutes into the game. But initially, I'm thinking, okay, we're doing pretty good. Move on to the base. Becomes contested. All right, so we know we got at least one destroyer here. Twist and track suggesting uh, the northward uh, location. Olin. Okay, this guy doesn't have smoke. And he's in... in 4.4 within 4.4 kilometers of our range so that's the sonar range in this thing pop the smoke pop the sonar we got him in our web teammates shooting him this is looking great he's getting out of there pretty quickly and he's looks like he might have a eh, maybe just bad aim i don't know if that's a dispersion build or not uh, but nevertheless he lives to fight another day akatsuki he's coming in here too he's like yeah, hold my beer let me see what i can do and this does look like a dispersion build to me maybe you're watching this saying this dude can't aim that's always a possibility but a lot of these shots seem to be kind of going on both sides of the ship. So regardless, uh, these guys are going to live to fight another day here. But significant damage, 18,000 on destroyers. Both of them roughly half health to open. So that's not a bad opener. Got them off the caps. Move backward here. Put that little uh, peninsula or whatever you want to call it on that island in between me and potential torpedo angles. And okay, we'll just take shots of whatever else comes around here until the destroyers uh, come back into focus. So... Not bad. I mean, like I said, we conceded B. Uh, that's a lot of free points for uh, red. But uh, other than that, not not a horrible opening. Uh, we do have a 5v. Looks like 3 on C. You know, push into that. A little too passive over there. But we'll see how those guys can do. So, bringing A under control. Veneto. Sure, we'll take some shots here whenever we got them. Uh, we're keeping an eye on things, though destroyers that's all we're really caring about battleships they're going to sit in the back they're going to have relatively low impact at least early on in the game destroyers they're the scoring pieces they get on the cap and they convert those points torps coming in from b over here uh, so we back up keeping an eye on things here uh this is why we want to be zooming out and paying attention to what's going on because we weren't really necessarily expecting a destroyer from that uh angle we do have one spotted on, I think he was spotted on C, yeah, he's on the far edge of the map. And then we got one unaccounted for. We had two over here, so I think the one that attacked B and captured it is now turning his attention over here, potentially, or at least send some torps. That's the read I'm getting, at least when we're playing the game. So, gotta be keeping an eye on things. Uh, but, just kind of holding on to this play, because the options are we can move immediately into B and attack that or try and hold off these uh, destroyers. Here's the Olin, he popped up here, uh, took a shot. And then we dipped out into the smoke, so we lose him. And now we're getting radared. What's going on here? Atlanta moving in unmolested. Oh, my God. You always want to molest the Atlanta whenever possible. If you leave him alone, well, he's got the radar. He's got very fast-firing guns, uh, and a lot of them. He could absolutely crush these destroyers. 
who once again are kind of the players on the team that are responsible for scoring the points, so we want him dead. Uh, moving away from him, trying to... I can't really get out of the radar range by the time it die, or runs out, but I'm trying to make sure that he doesn't have a shot. Olin got a fair amount of damage, and take a look, we're well below 50% health, so costly play, engine knocked here, and oh god, the Veneto chiming in as well. Times are tough. We're down to a quarter of our health. Bismarck running for the hills. He's very scared. All right, so we're getting out of here. Uh, luckily, we got the uh, Gneisenau here. He's chiming in with the guns, and uh, I think he's actually going to torp the Atlanta. However you want to do it, just get him off the board. We want these radar cruisers dead as quickly as possible. So I'll be getting spotted through the Gator's mouth, I think. Uh, the Atlanta, we weren't shooting, so the Veneto shouldn't be able to see us, but down goes the Atlanta. There we go. So first radar cruiser off the board. And what's the game situation? Well, we're up a ship. Down on the score, though. That's because we got A eventually, but I think they got B a little bit quicker. And the weight of our ships. We got a battleship, which is worth 100. Cruiser, which is worth 80. And then they got two 75-point destroyers and an 80-point cruiser. So however it adds up, they're up just a little bit here. Being a little bit aggressive, but noting... The guns on the Veneto not pointing towards us. If we even start to see them creep over here, immediately we're going to stop shooting and try and get behind cover. But as long as we're firing for free here and nobody in the sea areas, we're not taking shots at least. Uh, it's not that they can't hit us necessarily, but uh, they're not at the point. So we're just trying to chime in here. We're trying to get this guy off the board. He's pushing into the cap, pushing into the Brandenburg. And the destroyer did pop up on the map here a moment ago. I didn't notice when I was playing until roughly about now when the guy went behind the island i'm okay what else can we do oh crap there's a destroyer here's the black got two left oh we're down a ship we're down big now we're about just shy of 200 points down this is already starting to look a little dicey Ooh wee we got one of the destroyers there and the black's in trouble now ideally i'd be sailing away from him but he's sailing away from me or he will be attempting to i don't want to let him get away uh, he is kind of trapped by in between me and the AFK destroyer who's just been buffing his Dewey the whole game. So we can pop the smoke. The other guy will spot him. Looks like the Black's attempting to pop his smoke as well, but we're desperately trying to get him down. Well spotted. If we can get all the destroyers off the board, now we can start to work on the bases, and that's going to make the game somewhat winnable. Because right now it's not looking too hot. Again, we're down about 150. Oh, God, we just lost our AFK guy. So now we're just shy of 200 points. Got to get him down. He's dropped spot here. Nobody's spotting him, but we're pummeling him with these fast-firing guns. And there he goes. All right, so destroyers taken care of. Problem. We got one radar cruiser, a nearly full health Indianapolis, three battleships. We got two battleships, two destroyers. So if those four battleships combine to beat up my battleships, eh, then the Indianapolis can more or less single-handedly win the game. If he's got a radar, char radar charge, he can deal with us that way. If not... All he's got to do is basically bully the caps and then force it. We're going to be forced to attack the caps because we're so desperately down in score. And if he's on those caps, then he should be able to kill us with his relatively quick reloading gun. So very, very hard to win this game here. That's why we're taking risks. Normally, I don't want to be chiming in. I mean, nobody can currently spot us, so this is a safe shot. But you can see the battleship to the northeast just barely outside of our range. As soon as he comes in, we'll be detected. Uh, radar cruiser... You know, he probably could actually hit me here. I don't know the exact range, just judging on the map, but it's close. And, you know, these are the kind of plays that we're talking about a lot on this channel where not always the, the play you need to make isn't always the play that you want to make, right? Uh, shooting a Veneto who's got 30,000 more health than me, not a play that I want to make sure if we're not getting spotted. It's a harmless play, but uh, as soon as he was coming around the bend there, well, if we kept shooting, we get spotted, maybe we get some other guys chiming in on us. But we don't have the options. We kind of conceded B and C here. Uh, despite having a major overload on C, we actually got slaughtered on that side. And uh, the option to win on the score is no longer here, right? They've had control of the majority of the caps the entire game. And now time is low enough that we really... I don't know if mathematically you could win on score. We'd have to basically flip these caps immediately. They're on A. They're pausing our scoring there. They're getting two caps worth of scoring. I'm trying to move on to B as quickly as possible to neutralize a little bit of that and keep it relatively even. But the longer this goes on, the cap situation, the more you're forced to get kills, right? And this is a situation where I got an Indianapolis close to me. I got a Sharon Horse close to me. Do I want to be open watering the Sharon Horse? No. Do I have an option? 
Uh, not really. Not as far as I can tell. I mean, certainly not when I was playing it. I didn't think I had it. Got him down. Okay. All right. At Indianapolis, he's uh, gunning the King George who's trying to kite. Boom. He goes down there. Uh, looks like the Sharnorse actually got him before he died. We're trying to get a little bit more damage here because the Indianapolis existential threat. Does he have a radar? I don't know. Probably. You got to assume he's got a radar. We're definitely within the range. 10 kilometers. Uh, so we need to pull forward. Get behind the island. Ooh, we just lost about 20% of our remaining health. Not good. All right, we got a destroyer. He's off on the edge of the map doing God knows what. Uh, <laughs> essentially, for all intents and purposes, when we're evaluating this game, we just disregard him. He's not, he hasn't proven that he's trying to win the game at all, so we don't care about him at all. Maybe it hits the Duke with a torp. Congratulations. Uh, we do have the Bismarck earlier who looked like he was trying to flee, but he came back. And the Bismarck ends up having some pretty clutch plays. I think he ends up having a pretty good game. So even though I kind of gave him a little bit of grief earlier for looking like he was going to run away i think he why i mean he without a doubt is uh key to this win for sure but we're trying to chime in here we are taking safe shots we're not getting spotted nobody knows about us uh and we've already once again the team is without a vote decided to we're going to win on score or we're not going to win on score we're going to win by killing everyone that's the only option we gave ourselves uh so that's it so we have to take these shots. We can't be playing passive. And we need to help the Bismarck take him out. And look at the Bismarck. He's in between Battleship and Battleship. The far west Battleship, there he is. The Veneto gets the Z-23. And now he's got a broadside shot at the Bismarck. So at this point in time, I'm like, ugh, you know, this is not looking good. We do get the Duke there, but we're down 232 points. Uh, we got a seriously compromised Battleship. Both of them are very low. Indianapolis desperately needs to be in a position to be chiming in with these guns. And this is, to the extent that Red is uh, responsible for this loss, which they always are going to have some responsibility, this is the main part. The, the Indianapolis has to combine fire with that Veneto, has to kill the Bismarck, and then he can just sit on B. I can't win on score if he's on B, and if I want to rush at him, he can kill me, right? He can angle, uh, no problem. Here he's coming around, though. And here we go. Hail Mary. Well, he's still attacking the Bismarck. I'm still in my mind thinking Bismarck's going to go down. Indianapolis should be able to kill him. Of course, the Bismarck could, uh, if he hits him, give him some grievous damage, but none taken. And here we go. We're chiming in here. Boom, 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 boom. Getting as much damage as quickly as possible, hoping to God the Bismarck gets into a position to either hit him with secondaries or main guns. And we're just assuming we're going to go down, but we're trying to disengage behind the island. And he's pointing at us now. He's angling in. And at that point in time, the AP no longer is going to be doing much damage. He's only got about 4,000 damage left. And I'm like sitting here like, okay, he just took another whack. He's got one 2,000 health. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We got four kills. Let's go for the Kraken. Okay, let's back this up. If we get killed, we get killed. If we dies, we dies. But we'd like, we'd like to chance it all. I'd like to gamble our team's future on the Kraken. Why not? They gamble... Uh, my results all the time for goofy plays. But nevertheless, Bismarck does a great job there and gets him off the board. So that's a look at the Friesland for you guys. Hopefully you did enjoy it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. New to the channel, consider subscribing. Lots of World of Warships coming for you all the time. Questions, comments, leave below. Love to hear from me, and I'll see you all later. Peace.